Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, with an introduction to our experiment for measuring the force between two current carrying wires. Uh, at this time, this is primarily in, uh, for the general physics 2, physics 152 students, but we might find it useful in other settings in the future. Uh, this is our, our current balance apparatus that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to provide current with this power supply, like this the same supply we've been using for a few weeks now. Uh, so we're, we're accustomed to, to that device. And the first thing we want to do, um, so you're going to need to measure dimensions and things. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to do a calculation to, to make sure you know how to derive the expected relationship between magnetic force and the current. We have the same current, same uh, size of current, magnitude of current flowing in the top wires and the bottom wire here. What would we expect the force between those to, to be? How would we expect that to depend on current? And so you're going to do that derivation. Then you're going to discuss among yourselves about whether you want the current in the top wire to be in the same direction as the current in the bottom wire in the opposite direction if you want a repulsive force. So here's the theory. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of separation between these two wires, and then we're going to add small masses. We got little tiny masses we're going to add uh, so that the gravitational force pushes this wire down. Then we're going to dial up the current in order to get the in order to get the the top wire back where it was, and and make the argument that we've then canceled out the gravitational force with the magnetic force, so we know what the magnetic force is, and and, and we can record the current at that point for that magnetic force and then we're just going to keep doing that. So our first task is, so you know, you're going to need to measure the, uh, lengths and, and maybe diameters of these rods. You've got a ruler for that. You've got uh, a micrometer, uh, uh, calipers, excuse me for that. And, and so the first thing we're going to do, you can, you can lift this whole ap apparatus off and put it back down on there. Uh, so we have, um, we can try to bend this a little bit if it looks like it's closer on one end and the, than the other end. So we can tweak this whole apparatus uh, as we see fit. We're going to look down from the top to make sure that these are aligned well with one another, the top wire and the bottom wire. We're going to have a magnetic compass in here and try to uh, align this with the Earth's magnetic field so the Earth's magnetic field isn't contributing as well. But then we make the recommendation that we reverse the current direction to, uh, to, to um, sort of average out any effects of the Earth's field. And it's only the effects of the Earth's field that are perpendicular to these wires in a certain direction. Remember, you need a magnetic field that's perpendicular to the current flow in order to create a, a force on that current carrying wire. And that uh, perpendicular direction needs to cause a force up and down. If it causes a force front and back this direction, we don't, we don't have freedom to move in that direction. So you can do a little bit of right-hand rule calculation stuff Practice that. That's a good practice for you to be thinking about that. Being able to practice your right hand rule uh, work in order to do this experiment. So, but after we get all that done, we make our measurements. We sort of settle into what we want to do. We do our calculations. Then what we're going to do is we're going to try to dial this. So we don't want a big gap like this between the wires, and we don't want those wires touching. We're going to see if we can get a space between there that's maybe equivalent to about one diameter of one of these rods. So what we do that, we have adjustable weights in the back. I don't know if you can see that here, uh, but we've got these weights and, and they turn. And if we turn them in this direction, that's going to cause uh, less torque back here. And if we have less torque back here, then we're going to settle down closer together, these rods in the front. If we dial them back, we're going to have more torque uh, back there and it's going to cause them to lift up higher. That's what we're going to do. We're going to check here first. This is a magnetic brake. If you've talked about Faraday's law and magnetic braking, you see there's a magnetic brake right here, a very interesting device. And we want to make sure that that's not scraping on the magnets right there. So we're going to slide this left and right just a little bit to see if we can, um, the, whole, the whole apparatus, just make sure that it's, it's centered in that slot between the two magnets. And it looks like we have it right there. And so then I'm going to dial this. Back. I want a little more separation, so I got, I got a couple of these I can choose from right there. Um, I just moved that top wire. So you see, I dialed it back a little bit. We're getting a pretty big, we're going to let that settle down and stop oscillating. Uh, that's a little bit too much, right? So I got to come in just a little bit with one of these weights back here to see if I can make that separation a little bit less. 
that's going to look pretty good right there, I think. I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, but it looks like a pretty good separation. So if I bring it up here, uh, maybe you can see the separation between those rods a little bit better. Uh, we're looking down from the top, so it's not easy for you to be able to see it. Uh, but that's what we have right there. Um, so in any event, uh, that's that's what we got. We got a pretty good separation. Uh, let me actually, um, yeah, actually, I'm going to do this for you. I want you to I want you to see that separation. So I'm going to dial that down. See if I can get it so you're looking more straight on. You're not looking straight on, but you can see that separation. It's about, it's a little bit more than one dry rod diameter. If it were a little bit less, that would probably be better. Uh, but that's what we got here right now. I had it dialed up so you can look from the top and see the whole apparatus as we were, as we were looking down on it just a little bit so you can try to get a sense uh, of what this thing looks like from the top. So we're set to go. Uh, now, what we want to do, we have to measure where this, the, how, what the separation of these rods is. Um, and so you can estimate the separation of the rods. Uh, use your, your digital calipers. And again, you might, it might be helpful um, to measure uh, the space. You might be able to try to measure the space between the rods. Uh, you might measure the, between the top and the bottom. And if you know the diameter of the rods, then you've got, uh, you, can, you, you know, think about what we mean by separation. Do we mean inside edge to inside edge, outside edge to outside edge, center to center, and so on? So you got to think that through and get the separation that you, you want right there. Record that number. But we got to basically we're just going to use this now as an equilibrium point. We're going to come back to that point. So we got to figure out when we're back to that point. And measuring with this probably isn't precise enough to do the job that we want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this laser and we're going to shine it off the mirror back here. And so when I click the laser on. The light's gonna, the laser light hits the mirror, and we've got a two meter stick against the wall over here. And so we want that two meter stick to, we wanna be able to hit that two meter stick so we can see the dot on the two meter stick. So, so we can get the dot on the stick over there and see, you gotta fiddle around with it so you're not blocking the light, so you don't miss the mirror, and you're not blocking the light with the, um, with the current balance apparatus. And we may have to move the stick. Uh, if Once you get this thing aligned with the Earth's magnetic field, probably you will have to move the stick, but we'll see uh, what we can do here. And so, in any event, we wanna try to get this thing lined up back there. Uh, I'm gonna turn the, the, the camera around, keep moving it around on you here. Uh, there's the stick, and I don't know if you can see the red dot on the wall right there uh, in, in the camera field of view. Um, I don't see it very well. Uh, so now maybe you can see it there. Yeah, you see the red dot. And so my trick is to turn this, this laser pointer slightly so that that red dot hits, goes over and lands on the, lands on the, the meter stick right there. And when it's on the meter stick, I can read the position of it on the meter stick, right? It's a little bit hard for you to see on the meter stick there. We need, maybe if we had the room darkened, but I'm not gonna set the lights out uh, right now. So you can see the dot there and, and record the, the, the position that it is. Then when the then when the wire moves, this is going to move up and down. So I'm just going to get it on the wall where you can see it better in the camera field of view, maybe. So we're going to have this thing positioned on the wall. There's the dot. Uh, you can't see it great on this. The light's being blocked a little bit by the, the clip. I'm going to change the orientation of the clip to see if that helps us. All I did was change the, the clip that was clipping the, the laser pointer on. So now you've got a nice bright dot. Hopefully you can see that in your 
camera view. And watch what happens when I lift the, the rod up. You see that this moves up and it's going to move down when I lift the rod, when I push the rod back down. So we've got that space that we like built in there. And what we're going to do then is we're going to add mass to it. And we're going to get the mass here. Get back out of the way. Uh, so we're going to add mass to this tray right there. And so you're going to have to, once you get this thing set up like you like it, you're going to have to try to be careful and not move the laser and not move this arm so much, uh, this, this current mallet so much. I'm trying to make the gap larger so you can actually maybe see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. So it's probably lar it's larger than probably what you want. Uh, but I, I don't know, maybe you can see it on there. Then you take your tweezers and you have a small mass right here. And it tells you some of these what the masses are, but we don't trust them. We would weigh it. We have a scale up here for you to weigh it. And you can also take tiny pieces of aluminum foil and add to this. And the idea is you want to get up to, you know, a few grams, milligrams at a time, excuse me, a few milligrams at a time. You want to get up here um, maybe five milligrams at a time. Uh, if, you, if you tear up little pieces of aluminum foil, you get three or you get eight. That's all great. And there's some tens and twenties in here. And so you can mix these things together and get as many data points as you can between, uh, uh, you know, a five, five or ten milligrams and as much as you can get. So you're going to have to turn the current. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put this on here in the tray. And it moved down slightly. You probably can't tell it moved down slightly, uh, but you could see it in the red dot on the wall over there. And so uh, then let's actually, I'm going to put a heavy mass on there now to really push the thing down quite a bit. So we pushed it down quite a bit. Now that's 20 milligrams. That's noticeable. And maybe you need to start at 20 and do like 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, as much as you can do, because now we're going to turn power on here. And the way we're going to run the experiment this week is different from the way we've run this device in previous weeks. We're going to just turn the voltage all the way up, but we have the current limit turned all the way down. So now the, the potential is all the way up, but we're not driving any current across there. And then when I, when I start to drive current through there, it's going to lift the rod back up if I have this set up so that the currents provide a repulsive force. So as I start to turn this up, Keep your eyes on this tray right here and see if I'm going to turn it way up and see if you can see it bounce up. You see it growing right there and then shrinking back down. You're trying to get it back when the red dot gets back where it was, then you're back to um, uh, equilibrium and you're right back where you were before. And that's all great. Add another mass, do it again. Actually, I would reverse the current direction and do it again uh, with the same mass on there. Then add another mass, do it again. Get as many mass points as you can. Uh, and go up as high as you can. Now, there's a limit, right? You get all the way up to all the current you can drive through there, 10 amps that you can drive through there. That's all the supply will provide. And so with that 10 amps, uh, that's going to give you the maximum force you can get. And so there's a, that's going to limit how much mass you can actually uh, return to the equilibrium position. So um, give this a try. And, and, and do, we'll do the assessment that we do always, which is to say you're going to look at the data in different regions and determine if you feel like your data is uh, better, if it, if, it, if it looks more like you expect it to look, if it looks like there's bias in certain regions, uh, low current, high current, uh, and, and sort of do the analysis in different regions like that. And we'll walk through how to do the analysis uh, to, to sort of to see if we can figure out is the dependence on the current, what we would expect it to be. And can we extract a value from U naught, for example, from uh, this work as well? And which one of those can we measure better? Which do we do a better job, uh, more precision and more accuracy? Or anything about precision and accuracy both? So basically, that's what we got. I'm going <laughs> to dial this in here again. I'm going to settle these, uh, your camera back down for you. And so you're going to, hopefully you can see this wire a little bit better, the spacing between there. Uh, maybe you can see that. You, hopefully you can see 
uh, what we got going on there. And I'm going to turn the current up. And you see that repulsive force. Dial the current back down. And I can take a little bit of mass off of there. So I took a little bit of mass off of there. And we can do the experiment again. I should be able to get a little, a little more separation between the wires here this time with less mass on there. And then we'll just take that mass off and just do it without any extra mass added, just the weight of a... The, the top wire itself holding it down there. So I've, I've removed that. Now let's just do the experiment again. It may take a little bit to get this right, to, to, to get the feel for what it takes to push this thing up. But that's the idea. That's what we got for you. That's the experiment we're going to do this week. Uh, we'll, I'll put a video out there. Uh, walking you through. We're gonna, this week we're actually going to practice measuring the uncertainty in, in the parameters of linear phase. So uh, good luck with it everyone and we'll see you in lab.